Wow, man. What is crappening, gentlemen and ladies? Crazy Uncle DLC reporting from middle America after facing death last night. Mm. Papa, we faced death last night. How'd you feel about that? She's anxious. She gotta go out. She's anxious. We gotta uh, give Indiana a little bit of fertilizer in a few minutes here. But APU is running in the background. We'll see how loud that is later. Dude, so we almost lost everything last night. Not everything. The truck would have been fine, but the drive and trailer, uh, the load would have been gone. Um, you know, and that probably would have convinced me to just call it quits. We're five years, going on five years. We're a month away from five years in business as BOC Enterprises. And I'm back, I've been a single truck operation now for the better part of two years. At one point, we had 16 guys leased onto this company um, during the boom and uh, spread across two different MCs. It was, it was a crazy time, but things have definitely slowed down for me and it was much needed too, I'll, I'll be honest with you. But last night was the, uh, it's the second most harrowing moment in my trucking career. The first was in 2013 where I should have rolled the truck over. I was a company driver and just against the laws of physics, the truck somehow managed to stay straight and get, I got it back on the road um, when debris fell in, like right in front of me on the highway and I had nowhere to go but into the median, which was tipped down like this. So pure luck, we didn't roll that truck over. And last night it was pure luck that the entire trailer didn't burn down and hundred percent caused by driver error. I me i completely inattentive not paying attention it was like 9 30 at night rolling through ohio uh about 30 miles east of uh, cleveland and i noticed like the truck had been sluggish i had just left from um a welcome center in pa that was the last time i had stopped so you're talking probably about 70 miles 60 miles or so and after i got into ohio i noticed that i was having issues like climbing hills and, and stuff and the truck was sluggish but i just chalked it up to uh the fuel filter the water separator has to be changed out every every single time it rains the day after for some reason the, the, these tanks just accumulate moisture and it gets in the water separator i have to change it out in order to get back to normal fuel uh pressure and performance whatever so i thought it was that and i would check it when i went to get fuel in toledo that was where i was planning on stopping and like the road was relatively like nobody was on it and it was dark there's no lights so you know just by blind luck i came up to pass this car and finally when I got to see headlights in the back and I, I was just jamming music just fucking you know loud 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 late night rolling and I couldn't I couldn't really hear much if I was attentive I would have noticed that my air pressure gauge was continue you know down to like 90 it, it sits at uh, like 115 120 when we we're rolling down the road normally yeah it was keeping it around 85 ish and I would have if I had the music down I would have actually heard the air pressure notice the noise going through the valves right like when you have a leak you could hear it in the cab um, on, on the uh, air pressure valve over here. So it, this had been the first time I took this drive van out in about a year and a half, a little bit lo longer than that, about a year. I hadn't driven it, so used it since. I, I did some bottled water last summer um, and I decided to go back to drive van freight, you know, for the month anyway, temporarily. My renewal comes up next year or next month, uh, first week of June on both uh, IRP and the authority renewal or insurance, sorry, not the authority. Um, so I was gonna take this month to decide if I really wanted to keep doing this or not, or find something else to do in my life than own a trucking company. So I'm stupid, that's the bottom line. I had a massive air leak. What ended up happening was the spring that holds up the tandem, the tandem slidable uh, air hoses, that, that whole kit with three lines going back to the tandems, uh, you know, it slides and then it expands, right? They, they allow an extra six feet of hose there so you can actually slide your tandems back. Uh, the spring that held it up had broken and I had been dragging that long enough to create a hole in uh, a fitting that was there on one of the on one of the um, hoses and a uh, second hose had uh, like ground almost all the way through. So what ended up happening, long story short, it's ridiculously long, I'm sorry, but this is one of the ri most ridiculous things that ever happened to me. Um, I couldn't see anything until that car and as soon as I passed the car they just jammed right back around and they were waving me down flag me and when I when I was looking they flashed their lights I saw all this fucking smoke behind me like just billows and billows of smoke I'm like oh my god dude my truck's on fire and that that I immediately snapped I'm like okay that's why it's so sluggish I look at the the PSI gauge and I'm like yep yeah, I'm losing air the brakes must have been rubbing or whatever we got a brake fire so pull over uh jam back to take to see what the hell's going on at my flashlight and everything and like 
I, I've been in like a real rut for the past two years, like no killer instinct, not feeling like a savage at all, not doing anything correctly, um, you know, to further my life or anything like that. And for the first time faced with a threat like that and that adrenaline rush that was required to kind of sort through that situation, uh, I almost felt alive again. <laughs> I mean, I, actually I did. No, I, I literally felt alive again. I, I felt that there was a reason to continue living <laughs> and to keep like actually try and, uh, you know, just keep going. <laughs> Cause it's been bad. It's been hard for me for the past two years. You know what I'm saying? So I've been through a lot of mental problems. Well, not really problems, but just whatever, you know, not hundred percent sure what I was doing. I'm going to be 45 this year, whatever. So jam pack flashlight. The first thing I see is flames on the front right tandem on the driver's side. I'm like, ah, mother fuck. So I got to run back up to the cab. I have my fire extinguisher, um, you know, in the side compartment under the sleeper. So We'll, uh, I had to grab that, grab the keys, open that, get the fire extinguisher, run back, get underneath the trailer, and it was smoking, like on fire. The, the drums were red hot on uh, on the front. And what I would notice a little bit later, the drums were red hot on the right rear axle, um, uh, on that wheel, that wheel hub. Those, that drum was like super hot. Um, and I didn't even notice that one on fire because there was so much smoke until I put the first one out. And I go, I go, I, I kind of looked around like this when I was underneath and that one, it was bright red. It lit up the whole fucking, you know, it, it was basically lighting up darkness. So I get back and go, come back out onto the roadside, go around, sneak around and get under there again. And the smoke is just billowing right into my face at this point. I don't have any other way to get access to that thing. And I sprayed the fire extinguisher again. The, the front one was put out and uh, it put it out for about five seconds came back on that the fire came ignited again and i go to hit it again i'm out of fire extinguisher i'm like and i know i have a five gallon bottle of water here in the cab that i can use so it's pretty much blind luck that i've been carrying my own water with me and uh i, I run back to the cab um to grab this thing and uh you know open it whatever uh, it actually, if you open that, it still smells like smoke and burning brakes. I, I must have gotten so much smoke in there, so now I, I can't use that for drinking water anymore. I, uh, I kept splashing it. Every five seconds, I would splash more, splash more onto the, onto the drum until finally it cooled down and it, it stopped burning. And I, had, uh, I was lucky enough to call the fire department on, the, on a second way back. I grabbed my phone and my headset and said, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I can put the second one out. Uh, can you send the fire department, please? All right, so this is what the, what the mechanic ended up having to do was splice out all the cup parts and put these couplings in on the uh, on the hoses. And like now I can't slide the tandems, obviously there's not enough hose left. So that's gonna be a temporary problem. This is a temporary fix. When I get it back, I'm just gonna have uh, my mechanic put a new hose in here. But yeah, see, this little, because that, this happened here, cost me uh, a $700 roadside and almost lost the whole load because of the fire. This one held, but you know, like a professional driver who owns his own company for five years, you would think, I would be better at handling uh, preventative maintenance, but no, nope. My head was, has just not been in the game lately for trucking, dude, but I'll tell you, last night was a game changer for me. So, <clears throat> miraculously enough, we were after everything cooled down and the, the mechanic did this, I was really concerned I wasn't gonna be able to actually run the truck again after that, because I thought maybe the brake pads would seize to the drums or, or whatever. I got super lucky, man. Absolutely 100% lucky that none of this wheel seals burned out. Uh, no oil from the axles ignited in any way. Um, I checked all the everything. I checked all the hubs um, and all the brakes still function. Pure luck that I was able to put this this front axle out and, and run, run up, scoot around and get the back with the, the rest of the water was there because if I did not have that second thing of water, this entire trailer would have been lost and uh, a load of paper rolls. And I most likely would have just taken the license plate off, ripped off the, the VIN tag on the front of the trailer, unhooked and drove away. <laughs> I'm joking, but it crossed my mind afterwards. I'm like, what would you have done to, to fix stuff? So, you know, obviously you look at that condition of this trailer in general. I probably shouldn't even have bothered taking this thing. I, I don't know why I switched to drive in at the first place. It's a problem, we just went out. You just went out, yo. You tre you're admonishing me about my business decisions, taking this forever old trailer out <laughs> without really doing too much of an inspection on it. Oh man, just laziness, pure laziness, slothful that caused this. And it's just a, it's a real wake up call, man. You know, just stupid, stupid mistake led to that thing where I could have 
all hell could have gone broken loose, you know? Um, you know, luckily, there were, there were no, like, legal repercussions. The, the fire department showed up, and they left within about 20 minutes. They checked it and checked the temperature on everything, and it was okay. Nothing was on fire anymore, and it was cooling down. But it could have just gone way worse. So, I don't know, man. I think I'm, I'm, I'm dropping this trailer. I'm going to go put it back. Maybe I'll have the brakes done. Maybe not, because I don't really intend on running this again, <laughs> honestly. We're, we got a load in, uh, delivery in Chicago in the morning, and I think I'm going to hitch get something going straight back and then just park this thing go back to the reefer business i don't know why i did this it was just because i i hate using dit board i don't like using the dat board and you know the customer the broker i had been using for all my most of the majority of my reefer freight had, had kind of disappeared uh, out of the northeast they just don't really have too much going on and getting out of the northeast is the hardest thing to do i almost always have to take a uh, bottle water load but we'll talk about that maybe in the future, what I decide to do. But I, I have convinced myself after this emergency situation that it all worked out somehow in the end. And I'm meant to continue doing this. Like, if everything had burned, uh, that would have been a sign to get out of the, the, the business entirely. Just sell, sell the trailer, sell the truck, go find something else to do. Because lose, having that kind of, uh, you know, a tragedy occur... Which is the, is the impetus I would have needed to just get out and, and go do something else. But I think it, it's my resolve has steeled since this. And uh, I'm going to recommit to making this work and uh, to keep rolling, keep rocking. So, Crazy Uncle BLC checking out. And uh, that won't, maybe I won't be such a stranger anymore, but that was a pretty uh, crazy life moment last night. So, I figured I'd share it with you. Always be careful, do better pre trips. <laughs> Replace the, the five dollar spring so you don't set your trailer on fire like an idiot uh, a complete dumbass, you know Or drive newer equipment Maybe that's the other option. Maybe I just need to buy a you know a newer trailer and not have to worry about that But I put so much money into the reefer the trailer that I got it uh, You know everything's pretty up to snuff with that. So I guess we're going back to reefer It is what it is Keep water in your truck. Oh, by the way one fire extinguisher not enough to put out brake fires I'll just let you know, like, there's no way. If, there, that, if all four of those had been red hot and on fire, I would have been completely fucked. The whole the thing would have gone up. So, yeah, one one fire extinguisher, not enough. My amateur firefighter experience tell, tells me this. Get more than one fire extinguisher <laughs> if you're a donor operator. Cause, and this is a big one, too. This is an older, old school one, not like the, the mini one that you could order off Amazon that's about, like, a foot long. This was an old school one, like a, a two and a half foot tall uh, fire extinguisher. And I use all of it. So, and on, on basically one and a half of the, uh, of the shots, uh, 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 of the brakes. So, got to get more. <laughs> I'm going to have at least two fire extinguishers in there. That's the next thing to do. Stop, stock an additional fire extinguisher. So, all right. Rambled on long enough. Hope to see you again soon.